Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am up today. We are doing ice fishing. Yeah, great, great to be back up here in the great, the great white north. Um, it is like 10 degrees right now, and uh, we're about to go. Like I said we're gonna do some ice fishing. I'm with Mindac Outdoors, and uh, hopefully, gonna be doing some catching and cooking today. I know you guys love catching cooks, and uh, that's what's on the agenda today. But we'll see how we'll see how today goes. We gotta get kind of everything loaded up, rock, ready to rock and roll, and then uh, head southeast, up north, northwest, or something like that. We're gonna go find some fish. You guys stay tuned. Well, folks, we are off to the Wall of Mart to get some get some supplies for the old catch and cook. Uh, we've already got some stuff with us. Um, we're not gonna buy everything, but we'll kind of walk through the, the, the whole spread kind of once we get to the lake. We're gonna get a few items that we don't have on hand uh, to complete this catch and cook. But if you guys enjoy catch and cook videos and want me to continue them after this video, let me know in the comments section down below. Ooh, got him. Now we're talking, is this it? Is this all we need here? Yeah, I, don't know. I feel like we should just get it just to like this. make sure make sure we get the right thing. I mean that's what it's for. So let's just get that, that. Should be good. Alright, I think we got everything we needed. We just got a stove, some propane, a little bit of oil, some hot, some hot hands for the camera batteries. That's pretty much it, because right now it's a whopping nine degrees outside. This might be one of the coldest ice fishing days I've done. Normally I don't ice fish when it's super cold like this, but of course John drugged me out here and he loves it, don't gotta you? Got to toughen you up a little bit. You got to you know? toughen me up. Yeah. Just too soft right now. Yeah. But now we got the supplies. We're going to head to the lake. It's like, what, 40 minutes away, 30, 30 40 minutes away. I drive out there in hopes to get some, get on some what gills and some crappie and hopefully make a really awesome lunch fish fry. Oh, here we go, folks. We made it to the lake. Got everything kind of loaded up in the sled and we'll see if we can make some catch and cook magic happen. Everybody loves a good old catch and cook. So as you guys may or may not know, John, he's like the ice fishing guy. Like, like he's like what he is for ice is like what I am for small fish. So we're gonna let him kind of, kind of do you know show, show me and show you guys the ropes and do all the tips and explanation for this video. Not that I don't know what I'm doing for ice fishing. I mean I've been ice fishing for years and years, but he's like he like grew up here, and so he's gonna kind of catch maybe the first couple fish if we're lucky, and, uh, and then kind of give you guys tips hopefully, and then I'm gonna try to take over, catch a few fish, and see if we can have a, a delicious. Buff reds, reds hot sauce. Oh, That's you guys food. get ready. We're gonna have a good lunch. I want to be fishing at about 12 feet, 12 feet, 11.8 to be exact. But we're just gonna whole hop right now until we mark a few fish. And then once we find some fish, we'll settle down and try to try to catch these uh, beautiful pan fish. All right, so I'm already marking fish. Gonna drop down on them. Um, they're sitting at about a foot off the bottom here. I'm just gonna j try jigging like a little bit above them. I seem to have a school down there, and once you have a school, generally, that's probably a good sign because they're going to be more active and more inclined to bite your bait because they're competing. But I got fish all over me right now. And what you want to do is you want to slowly raise the fish off the bottom and find their comfort zone where they want to where they want to eat. So each fish is different. Some fish may not like it above nine feet. Some fish may like it below nine feet. You kind of got to treat each fish differently. And once you find their comfort zone, uh, you can figure out how to catch these fish. But right now, I'm just using plastic. I got fish all over me, just to school. Gonna see if I can finesse one here for you guys. All right, folks, it has been a struggle. We can't get any of these fish to bite. Well, we can, but they're just, it's, they're being really finicky. There's like nipping the very ends of our plastics. I downsized the bait. We tried live bait, nothing's working right now. So right now what I'm thinking is, we're just gonna have to try to finesse. Oh, there's one right there, got him. All right, finally, first one, what we got? Ooh, nice little gill. That's a good table fare right there. All right, well, being that this is a catch and cook, this guy right here is gonna be dinner. But finally, I had like two or three on me. And finally, like after giving a little bit of jiggles here and there, finally got him to commit, but that's number one for the uh, the old catch and cook. So like I was saying, when it's like really finicky like this, I think they're being really finicky because this is the coldest day of the week that we've had in, in this area in like a really long time. So I'm thinking this cold front kind of really shut them down and made them a little bit more lethargic. Uh, but you know, once you get them all schooled up and get them all fired up, they become a little bit more active and that's when you can really have the best opportunity at catching a fish. When you're fishing a light bite like this, a huge tip is watching your rod tip. So, cause these fish are barely gonna bite it. So you want to even see that lightest little slurp there and then set the hook. But 
it's gonna be one of those days that this is it's gonna be rough it's gonna be real rough I just moved spots I'm still fishing in about eh, 12 feet mark and fish in the exact same like area of the water column about 11 to 10 ish I'm gonna drop down and see if I can make something happen dropping down dropping down they're sitting at about 11 I'm gonna jig at like 10 immediately have a bunch of fish on me give a little jiggle watching my raw tip There he is. What we got here? Ooh, crappie. There we go, boys. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna eat. He's gonna have to eat because I can't seem to catch any more fish, but dang, not a bad crappie right there. So we're gonna have bluegill and crappie to eat so far. Gonna see if I can catch a few more though for you guys. Ooh, look at that. Looking like a snack, son. Well, I actually ran back to the truck to find these guys in my in my bucket, these are power bait wax worms. Because um, we were struggling to, to really get these fish biting and so I don't know I'll, I'm gonna stick with what John's been using But then I might whip these little glitter sticks out eventually and see if I can catch fish But he got decent decent bluegill decent crappie good table fare. She'll, she'll yeah, she'll, she'll eat, eat. Good she'll eat for fare. sure But now it's my turn to take over hopefully you guys learned something from John and uh, maybe took some notes for ice fishing But now I'm gonna try to uh, see if I can take over the reins and see if we can finish off I don't know probably six fish probably good for a fish fry. We don't need like a ton just enough to, to munch on for lunch But that's pretty much it We'll, we'll see what happens. All right, flare take over here. Get this little wax worm thing. So I said I got these little, little power bait waxies. Not ideal, but better. Things like these things are like sausage links. We'll see if it works. I think it's gonna be a little bit better than John's plastic, just because I think you know these things feed on wax worms a lot. Okay, here we go. First time ice fishing this year. Let's see if we can make some magic happen. Drop her all the way down. Yep, there's a fish right at 11 feet. Whole bunch of them now. Whole bunch of them. Yep. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. There we go. Little Gill. How you doing, little Gillian? Look at that guy right there. First ice fish, 2018. Well, I guess of the fall of 2018, but that'll get that guy. Look at his tail. His tail's all jacked up, but decent sized gill. I'm starting to get these guys kind of figured out. Basically, what happened was, you know, there's fish down there and they're kind of being lethargic, but. You know, start kind of rapid fire jigging, and then as soon as you kind of get it fired up, you raise them up, and the ones that will chase it up, I think John's probably already talked about this, they're smoking it. So it's like you just got to find the right bluegill within the group of the, the school of them to eat, but oh, we're going to get the get the bait back down there and see if we can get them, keep them going. Once once you catch one, that usually means you fired them up, so you want to get your, your bait back in there as quickly as possible. Yeah. Keep chasing it. Come on. Got him. Got him. Got him. We're hooked up, boys. What do we got here? Oh, cheese and rice. Look at that. Look at that gill right there, son. Look at that guy. On the little artificial wax, he's doing it. Look at that gill. That's a big in. That's a big panfish right there, son. All right, like I said, don't want to waste too much time. Let's see if we can drop it down and get another one. I literally just, we just moved holes, dropped down on them, saw one, and saw about three of them. And again, same deal getting them fired up and just trying to entice them to chase it up and the higher you can get them chase it the better chances you are of catching there's one right here got him got him got him finally my goodness finessing them for 15 stinking minutes that's another good one these stinking things have just been they're they are absolutely finicky probably the most finicky bluegill ever ice fished in my life where they just sit there and just tap it and you got to you gotta time it right, but see if we can catch one more. I still see a couple down there. We'll start filleting them up, do a little catch and cook action. I would like another crappie, honestly. I like crappie. Got him. Got him. Finally, my goodness. What do we got? Crappie, crappie, finally. There we go. Now we're talking, boys. Finally, this is exactly what I needed to end end the old the old fish catching section. Is nice little crappie, not a giant, but it'll eat. It has some meat on it. I love eating crappie. I love eating gills. So that's what six. I think I believe that's five or six fish. Now we're gonna go and uh, start filleting them up, cook them up, and I'll show you guys how I like to cook these fish. If you guys haven't seen my catching cooks in the past, this is be new for you, and this is my favorite way of eating fish off the ice or just fish in general. All right, Chef Boyardee, let's uh. 
Let's see what you got here. We got two crappies, four yep. gills. Two crappies, four gills. Gonna make some good table fare. Gonna fillet them up. And then... Would you just call it table fare? Table fare. Is that a thing? Yeah. I've never heard that table before. Fare. I've never heard that. Yeah, Is that so a Minnesota thing? Might be. All right, now we're on to the crappie. Let's see how you do here. You botching it or no? No. No. You're a seasoned vet, huh? Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That's the filet mignon of the ice, eh? Yeah, that's what they say. Then you just take your you just take your knife and then just basically cut it right off the skin and give you a little filet. Pretty simple. Not I mean, we're not doing a huge tutorial on here, but I mean basically you cut it behind the gill, go to the tail, flip it over, cut it off the skin, and then just take out the rib cage. Pretty simple stuff, but we're gonna get the rest of these filleted up here and toss them in the grease. So this is what we have to work with here, this little cooker. Our issue is we didn't realize that you have to have a flame. I mean, we we thought there might be like a fire starter on it. So one thing we do have, we got a little heater that's got a pilot light, but we don't really have anything to light on fire like paper. So my brilliant idea is to take a, a hot hand, a hand warmer, try to light that thing on fire. I have no idea if it's flammable or not, but I guess we'll find out. Should be real interesting here. Oh, look at that. Call me Bear Frickin' Grills. Is that what's supposed to happen? Oh, oh! I think it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right, so we got the oil getting hot right there. Oil getting oil, hot right there. Oil hot right there. Step, that's, I guess that's step one. Well, I don't even know what step we're on anymore, but next step, pouring the reds in our little Ziploc bag here. We're gonna mix all the fish together in this. That's your that's your seasoning, just that Frank's. Is, that is, just Frank's. No breading, no, no crumbs, breading. Well, no... The breading, after you, well, well, that's the next step. Okay, okay, ahead of okay, so okay, this okay. Is, this is the first step you gotta do here. Take our filets, put them in there. Sip this up. Just let it sit in there for about uh, three or five minutes or so. Give them a good washing. Get a good washing, yeah, a good yeah. Frank's washing. All right, step whatever complete. Operation Reds is now going to move on to the flour part. Going to transfer what's in here into the flour, shake it all up, get a nice coat on there, and then put in the oil. Making the transfer right here. My hands look like I uh, mur just murdered somebody, but I didn't. All right, now we shake it all around in there. Get it all nice and coated up. So that's our breading. Now we're going to wait for this oil to heat up, and then we're going to dump what's in here inside of there. Here we go. Golden Krispies, baby. Oh my gosh. I don't know how to describe this. It literally doesn't even hardly taste like fish. It tastes like a chicken wing. Like if you're going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings and get some chicken wings, you guys need to try it. It's the most simple thing. Frank's flour. Throw it in hot oil. You're good to go. Mm. This is just so good. When it's 10 degrees outside. Nothing beats it. Literally, is, uh, it tastes 10 times better when it's 10 degrees. This is the filet mignon of, of the, the, ice. the ice. For sure. Yeah, I would mm. agree. Mm. So freaking good. Well, we're going to end today's video. I know it's kind of a short deal, but we pretty much... What are you, what are you doing there, bud? Dude, I'm blowing O's with the, with the heat. <laughs> Who brought this guy? Hope you guys enjoyed. I basically ripped out to Minnesota late last night on a last second trip. I didn't plan on coming here this week. I was actually was planning on duck hunting, but the weather just didn't look that great for duck hunting. So I was like, dude, let's just go bomb up up north, up to the old great state of, where are we at? Minnesota. Minnesota. But if you guys enjoyed this catch and cook, let me know in the comment section down below. Really do appreciate the view. Peace.